Al-Paslan, real name Muhammad bin Dawood Chughra, was the second sultan of the Seljuk Empire and great-grandson of Seljuk, the eponymous founder of the dynasty. As sultan, Al-Paslan greatly expanded Seljuk territory and consolidated power, defeating rivals to his south and northwest. His victory over the Byzantines at Manzikert ushered in the Turkish settlement of Anatolia. For his military prowess, personal valor, and fighting skills he obtained the name Alparslan, which means heroic lion in Turkish. Early career, Alparslan accompanied his uncle, Tufrul Bey, on campaigns in the south against the Shia Fatimids while his father, Kagri Bey, remained in Khorasan. Upon Alparslan's return to Khorasan, he began his work in administration at his father's suggestion. While there, his father introduced him to Nizam al-Mulk, one of the most eminent statesmen in early Muslim history and Alparslan's future vizier. After the death of his father, Alparslan succeeded him as governor of Khorasan in 1059. His uncle Tufrul died in 1063 and was succeeded by Suleiman, Arslan's brother. Arslan and his uncle Kutamish both contested this succession. Arslan defeated Kutamish for the throne and succeeded on 27 April 1064 as Sultan of Great Seljuk, thus becoming sole monarch of Persia from the river Oxus to the Tigris. In consolidating his empire and subduing contending factions, Arslan was ably assisted by Nizam al-Mulk, and the two are credited with helping to stabilize the empire after the death of Tufrul. With peace and security established in his dominions, Arslan convoked an assembly of the states and in 1066, he declared his son Malik Shah I his heir and successor. With the hope of capturing Caesarea Mizaka, the capital of Cappadocia, he placed himself at the head of the Turkish cavalry, crossed the Euphrates, and entered and invaded the city. Along with Nizam al-Mulk, he then marched into Armenia and Georgia, which he conquered in 1064. Byzantine struggle. En route to fight the Fatimids in Syria in 1068, Alparslan invaded the Byzantine Empire. The Emperor Romanos IV Diogenes, assuming command in person, met the invaders in Cilicia. In three arduous campaigns, the Turks were defeated in detail and driven across the Euphrates in 1070. The first two campaigns were conducted by the emperor himself, while the third was directed by Manuel Komnenos, great-uncle of Emperor Manuel Komnenos. In 1071 Romanos again took the field and advanced into Armenia with possibly 30,000 men, including a contingent of Cuman Turks as well as contingents of Franks and Normans under Ursul de Bayul. Alparslan, who had moved his troops south to fight the Fatimids, quickly reversed to meet the Byzantines. At Manzikert, on the Murat River, north of Lake Van, Diogenes was met by Alparslan. The Sultan proposed terms of peace, which were rejected by the Emperor, and the two forces waged the Battle of Manzikert. The Cuman mercenaries among the Byzantine forces immediately defected to the Turkish side. Seeing this, the Western mercenaries rode off and took no part in the battle. To be exact, Romanos was betrayed by General Andronikos Dukas, son of the Caesar, who pronounced him dead and rode off with a large part of the Byzantine forces at a critical moment. The Byzantines were totally rooted. Emperor Romanos IV was himself taken prisoner and conducted into the presence of Alparslan. After a ritual humiliation, Arslan treated him with generosity. After peace terms were agreed to, Arslan dismissed the emperor, loaded with presents and respectfully attended by a military guard. The following conversation is said to have taken place after Romanos was brought as a prisoner before the Sultan. Alparslan, what would you do if I was brought before you as a prisoner, Romanos? Perhaps I'd kill you, or exhibit you in the streets of Constantinople, Alparslan. 
My punishment is far heavier. While the Byzantine Empire was to continue for nearly four more centuries, and the Crusades would contest the issue for some time, the victory at Manzikert signaled the beginning of Turkish ascendancy in Anatolia. Most historians, including Edward Gibbon, date the defeat at Manzikert as the beginning of the end of the Eastern Roman Empire. Certainly the entry of Turkic farmers following their horsemen ended the themes in Anatolia that had furnished the empire with men and treasure. State organization. Alparslan's strength lay in the military realm. Domestic affairs were handled by his able vizier, Nizam al Mulk, the founder of the administrative organization that characterized and strengthened the Sultanate during the reigns of Alparslan and his son, Malik Shah. Military fiefs, governed by Seljuk princes, were established to provide support for the soldiery and to accommodate the nomadic Turks to the established Anatolian agricultural scene. This type of military fiefdom enabled the nomadic Turks to draw on the resources of the sedentary Persians, Turks, and other established cultures within the Seljuk realm, and allowed Alparslan to field a huge standing army without depending on tributes from conquest to pay his soldiers. He not only had enough food from his subjects to maintain his military, but the taxes collected from traders and merchants added to his coffers sufficiently to fund his continuous wars. According to the poet Sadi Shirazi, Arslan possessed a fort, which raised at the height of Alwand, from all were those within its walls, for its roads were a labyrinth, like the curls of a bride. From a learned traveller Arslan once inquired, Didst thou ever, in thy wanderings, see a fort as strong as this? Splendid it is, was the traveller's reply, but methinks not it confers much strength. Before thee, did not other kings possess it for a while, then pass away? After thee, will not other kings assume control, and eat the fruits of the tree of thy hope, in the estimation of the wise? The world is a false gem that passes each moment from one hand to another. Suleiman ibn Qutamish was the son of the contender for Arslan's throne. He was appointed governor of the northwestern provinces and assigned to completing the invasion of Anatolia. An explanation for this choice can only be conjectured from Ibn al-Atir's account of the battle between Alparslan and Qutamish in which he writes that Alparslan wept for the latter's death and greatly mourned the loss of his kinsman. Death After Manzikert, the dominion of Alparslan extended over much of Western Asia. He soon prepared to march for the conquest of Turkestan, the original seat of his ancestors. With a powerful army he advanced to the banks of the Oxus. Before he could pass the river with safety, however, it was necessary to subdue certain fortresses one of which was for several days vigorously defended by the governor, Yusuf el Harezmi, a Quezmian. He was obliged to surrender, however, and was carried as a prisoner before the sultan, who condemned him to death. Yusuf, in desperation, drew his dagger and rushed upon the sultan. Alparslan, who took great pride in his reputation as the foremost archer of his time, motioned to his guards not to interfere. He drew his bow, but his foot slipped, the arrow glanced aside, and he received the assassin's dagger in his breast. Alparslan died from this wound four days later, on 25 November 1072, in his 42nd year, and he was taken to Merv to be buried next to his father, Chugrabeg. Upon his tomb lies the following inscription, O oh, those who saw the sky-high grandeur of Alparslan, behold! He is under the black soil now, as he lay dying. Alparslin whispered to his son that his vanity had killed him. Alas, he is recorded to have said, surrounded by great warriors devoted to my cause, guarded night and day by them. I should have allowed them to do their job. I had been warned against trying to protect myself, and against letting my courage get in the way of my good sense. I forgot those warnings, and here I lie, dying in agony. Remember well the lessons learned, and do not allow your vanity to overreach your good sense. Legacy
Alparslan is widely regarded as having begun Anatolianism, although unintentionally. His victory at Manzikert is often cited as the beginning of the end of Byzantine power in Anatolia, and the beginning of Turkish identity there. Alparslan's conquest of Anatolia from the Byzantines is also seen as one of the pivotal precursors to the launch of the Crusades. From 2002 to July 2008 under Turkmen calendar reform, the month of August was named after Alparslan.